Hey cats, it's Ed Gautier Bud here. Last week you may remember that I took a look at some of the worst running shoe uppers I've tested out over the last year or so. So today we'll flip the scenario on the head and look at some of the best running shoe uppers I've tested out in the last six months. Thanks for tuning in once again to Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews. It's always appreciated. If you're new to the channel or you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. And it helps us out a huge amount here at the channel. If you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share the video with your running buddies. Danke schön. A top notch running shoe upper can really elevate a footwear contender up to the status of king or goat. There's a guy a couple of doors down from me used to have a goat. We called him the goat man. You want luxurious lockdown in your upper and sensuous cushion-like comfort too. Here are some of the best running shoe uppers from the past few months to get those shoe spotters foaming at the mouth. I'm not going on looks here by the way guys, it's not a fashion show today. This is all about function over fashion. First up is the Vomero 16 from Nike. A wider Nike daily upper here. Actually, you don't really get very many wider Nike shoes at all. Less prominent arch, certainly, so I think it will probably fit a few more feet. That toe box, lovely and flexible, with a really superb height to comfort ratio. The side lace loops and the marshmallow-like tongue. It's almost like luxuriously padded this tongue, I tell you. Possibly more luxurious than the pad that Kevin McAllister stays in on his impromptu trip to New York. Laces of appropriate length. I mean, it's amazing how many running shoes I just can't get the lace length right. Come on! So lace length, check. Build and heel padding, check. Superb art gallery looks. Mm, not so much so, but who cares about that when you're grinding out the miles in the Vomero 16. One of the best uppers for comfort and fit that I've tested out in 2021. Like it or not, some people just will say the shoe looks trash, but I don't really care about that. It just really does the job. Wonderfully comfortable for pretty much any type of run. As uppers go for function and fit, it's hard not to love the RC Elite 2 from New Balance. A magic mixture of fit and appearance. Soft as a kitten. Comfortable as a well-loved sofa in your old student digs. You got some craft and haberdashery store vibes here. See what I mean? In fact, some of the upper reminds me a little bit of a pool or snooker table covering. You know, that baize that you get on those tables. It really is like that. This milk tray marvel from the New Balance Comfort Minstrels really is top draw. Like a packet of revels, but with the orange ones taken out. Ideal for longer range exploits and higher pace sessions too. It just does it all really. No rubbing, no lockdown issues here. Even with the reduced number of eyelets that New Balance have decided to implement in this shoe. It's almost like a sock-like fit really. Just so comfortable on foot. Not sure there's much I'd really change about this shoe to be honest with you. Or maybe you could reduce down the large overlays that appear here. Some may find them garish, I find them great. Sometimes a race shoe can feel a touch like a dragster, can't it? All engine and no body. But the RC Elite 2 rides the line between those two requirements. A costly shoe, yes, but one of the best uppers I've tested out in recent months. I think from a viewpoint of materials, comfort and foot hug. Certainly one that grew on me as I got more and more miles into the shoe. My last run before sadly injuring myself recently was in the Adidas Adios Pro 2 Berlin. A cellar mesh wonder here. Craft, design and inspired fit. Flexible mesh here in the Adios Pro 2. A really fitting foot shape as well. It's like Adidas employed some small gnomes to come in at night and measure my foot and create the customized fit that we all want. I went a half size down on this pair and it's absolutely spot on. The lacing system here really does hit the spot like a delivery from the Golden River Chinese restaurant in Yeovil. Remember, the Golden River, they deliver. Shout out to Rich Lester. Superb heel lock in the Adios Pro 2, like a tacky tube of super glue covered in lashings of golden syrup. It wraps the heel like a moaning bandage covered mummy, scaring off the other competitors with relative ease. I think the structure of the toe box as well has to be talked about here. It's very focused due to a pattern of inner reinforcement pieces, somewhat like a blimp or an airship. 
Adidas have simplified almost all sections of the upper here with padding on the top of the tongue only in places where it's really needed. And as such, it makes for a glue-like lockdown over the top of the foot. Add that to the dynamite styling that you have here in this version of the shoe. It looks good and it produces a form-fitting, functional feel. Top marks to the three-stripe brand on this occasion. A high-quality upper that's almost top of the tree. There's only one other that outperforms it at this stage this year. So we've had uppers with wild logos. We've had tons and tons of padding in the Vomero 16. And a relatively simple upper with a few special additions in the Adios Pro 2. None come close though to the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite SP. Simply put, less is more. A wonderful visual burst here from Puma with a wafer thin like material for the upper. It really does hug the foot. Not in a nice sort of bear type way, but just in a barely there way. Just a tongue of minimal size. Everything here is minimalized. I think this upper really complements the insanely good midsole and outsole combo, and it makes it my favorite running shoe of the year thus far. I think only the Adios Pro 2 really comes close in terms of how I run in the shoe, in terms of performance. The lacing system works really well here, allowing for a great lock around the foot, enabling that Nitro midsole to do its thing, along with that stabilizing carbon plate. I think this shoe upper takes all of the great things that we found in the Liberate Nitro, which was another real high point for Puma in 2021. It just makes it even better with a further pared down approach. It's just less material here. Certainly a shoe which perhaps looks a little bit more like a traditional race flat. I wouldn't say it is a traditional race flat, but it looks like one, certainly. Not like some of these other weird shoes. Some very strange uppers that we've seen over the course of the last couple of years. I mean, the Alpha Fly is very odd. Still looks a bit elfish to me. There's no offset lacing required here or very bright outlandish shades. The German shoemongers have kept it a tad more traditional and I think the EPM Deviate Nitro Elite is all the better for it. It's just a shame more runners can't get hold of this shoe right now. I think you'd enjoy it. Personally for me, the best race shoe in 2021. I don't think there's anything better out there. Yeah, I said it. So that's my four best running shoe uppers over the last few months anyway. What are your favourite running shoe uppers, guys? I'd like to know. Lavish me with your thoughts down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. I've been delving back further into the past. Do you remember Hip House? Where you kind of got hip hop and house music mixed together. I always love combos like that. And one of my favourite tracks from there is from the Beatmasters featuring MC Merlin. It's called Who's in the House. Really nice, bouncy, springy kind of production on this one. Quite dry vocal delivery as well, and very clear. A lot of hip hop, sometimes you can't really pick out all the words, but you certainly can hear from MC Merlin. The Beatmasters expertly mixing together some 909 kick drums with a more housey kind of vibe. Nice bouncy bass, and even some Italian house sounding pianos as well. Yeah, it really did take me back that one, reminiscing. I remember I had about three or four copies of this one. I think there were some extra remixes or something that I really used to enjoy listening to when I was younger. I think we're probably talking when I was about like nine or ten or something. I had a massive record collection back then. Any money that I got hold of went straight on records, on vinyl. I'd be straight down the record shop, the money would be burning a hole in my pocket. Go and check this one out guys, a fun tune from the past. Who's in the House by the Beatmasters and MC Merlin. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video, guys. It's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. And it helps us out a huge amount to get us to the top of most, to the pop of most. Give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.